I'm Bob Shaw and I have the good fortune of being the production designer on Boardwalk Empire. The production designer is sort of responsible for, you know, in concert with the director and the director of photography, sort of setting the visual tone of the show. There were like two whole different assignments. There was the boardwalk and then there was the whole rest of the show. And we really approached the boardwalk before we even got into some of the other sets that we had to build, because it was such a big undertaking. And the more research I did about Atlantic City and what that boardwalk looked like, the, the less convinced I was that this was ever going to be possible. Here we are in our boardwalk set, which is actually in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, on the East River. Bob's attention to detail his sets are just spectacular. We just started making little tiny model pieces. Once we went into the quarter inch model, it took about three and a half weeks or so to complete that. And then it took another three and a half months, a little more, to, to build the boardwalk itself, which really isn't a lot of time. We have a whole steel understructure underneath of us here so we can support the weight of cranes and things on the deck and possibly other kinds of vehicles. Once we could sort of break ground, we were just you know, desperate for the steel to get finished, which is a very time-consuming process, so we could start putting buildings up. So they actually were building them in the shop, kind of prefabbing them, and then starting to put them up here. Bob said, well, we can build a boardwalk set and augment it with green screen technology and, and digitize a lot of this stuff. What we're seeing here is actually only a fragment of the complete picture of the boardwalk. We only have the first story or story and a half of the buildings, and some of them go up to 20 stories, and those are done by the visual effects department. And obviously, you can see that we we're not on the ocean, and all of that's going to be added by the visual effects department. And the piers actually extend out into the ocean, and that's going to be added. So there are all sorts of elements that will be seen in the final show that aren't seen here. The Chop Suey building, there is no significance to it in the script. When we were putting the boardwalk together, we saw um, photographs of the building, and for some reason, it just captivated us. It uh, looks completely different lit at night than it does in the daytime, and it was just something we just had to have. <laughs> We are at the Dittrich Photo Studio. There were a lot of them in Atlantic City at the time, and I dressed the place largely with things from my own family album. I only found one piece of research, one photo of the inside of a Palmist studio, it was called, on the boardwalk. So we sort of had to improvise a little bit. And most of the wording on the windows here, though, came from the script. Definitely, what does the future hold for you was something that was in the script. Obviously, you can't have a boardwalk without the saltwater taffy store. We had some great cooperation from the people who now own both Freilinger's and James, which used to be the two competing rival brands on the boardwalk. They had actually done some sort of anniversary packaging, so we have tins that, that are reproductions of the originals. We just have to tell people if they're in the background of a scene to be sure to hold their hand over the barcode <laughs> because it's the one thing that's not historically accurate. The feature of the Incubator Baby exhibit was in the original script. It was something that uh, Terry Winter um, had, had found out was historically there in Atlantic City, and I think it was uh, something that presented an opportunity for him to, uh, to use um, in a sort of dramatic moment with the character of Nucky. Then we come to Abe Klein's, which is our delicatessen. Iconic turn-of-the-century store. They don't make them that way anymore. The idea of making the entrance to the store on the corner and then having this pole directly opposite the front door. But it was very common with buildings of the time. This is actually the back door to the Ritz. Somewhere on the street, not part of our set, is where your, your car or your limo would pull up. And this is the door that strictly is how we get onto the boardwalk. Originally, we had put these mermaids a, a little bit higher and not in what we would refer to as the strike zone for the camera. So, you know, looking at the whole boardwalk, Martin Scorsese just went straight to them and said, um, this is very nice, they're, they're too high, lower than place. He definitely has an eye for every detail. But the Ritz is one of the most central elements of our show. It's where Nucky lives, it's where Nucky holds court, so to speak. This room is Nucky's office. Uh, this is where he meets his business associates. It takes up the entire eighth floor of the Ritz Hotel. The lead character's home would definitely be something you'd want to build on almost any show. You start with very basic things, you know, trying to start with who the person is. We knew we were dealing with a pretty opulent interior, and it says that he's a very powerful person. It says that he really calls the shots in this town. You know, one of the things about this set that we hope is successful is that you have a view of of another room and of another room beyond it. This location is our Four Deuces uh, club, speakeasy, brothel in Chicago in our story. In reality, it's in uh, Bedford-Stuyvesant in Brooklyn in the area known as Stuyvesant Heights. 
This is the headquarters for Johnny Torrio, who is the head of the Chicago mob, and Al Capone was originally a bouncer. There's a, a fairly large Chicago component to the first season of the show. One of the things that we uh, really needed to do was to differentiate in terms of tone, palette, that kind of thing. Our Atlantic City palette is, is very light, not really a lot of dark wood tones, and Chicago is really quite the opposite. This is about as dark as we could be. This is a real challenge for the directors of photography at this particular location. I think they've done a great job. I don't think they enjoy coming here. We're in front of the John Wesley Baptist Church in Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn, which is the uh, location of our interior Babette set, which is some three miles, four miles from our boardwalk. <laughs> I originally conceived it, I wanted it to look like the nightclub scenes in Marty's movie, The Aviator. And I thought, oh, well, we're never going to be able to do anything that big, but it should feel like that. And of course, lo and behold, we did do something that big. I mean, it's massive space. We wanted it to have a nautical theme, so we ended up doing like sort of a, uh, a steamboat sort of motif, and the bar is actually a, a riverboat down south with a big wheel, paddle wheel. It suggested something to me of having seen older sort of nightclubs in Paris where there are sort of little private dining areas that are sort of curtained off. The combination of that and the riverboat and this strange mix of things became, you know, the Babettes that we know. It's 42 feet from the, the bottom of the boat to the top of the smokestacks. Marty really loved the idea of the bar that was shaped like a boat. And we knew that there was no way <laughs> he was going to give up the bar that was shaped like a boat. They're getting ready to film a scene here this afternoon, and uh, the crinkling sound is a, this sort of giant lighting balloon um, that will be flown up and is the sort of primary source of, of uh, illumination here. It's like a giant Chinese lantern. Actually, in the pilot, it became a bit of an issue accommodating the balloons that needed to be dropped. At the moment, Prohibition went into effect with the lighting balloons. The script clearly says that black balloons fall from above. They're celebrating uh, the beginning of Prohibition, so it's both a, a celebration and a mourning. This boardwalk set is amazing, you know. Um, I had no idea that they would have this much detail. The way I described it in the pilot script was Times Square on the ocean. I've been told that there hasn't been a large outdoor set like this built in, in the New York area since something like 1918. Bob, you know, is just a genius. He's just an amazing artist. It'll look like this boardwalk goes on as far as the eye can see, and that all starts with Bob Shaw and uh, ends with our visual effects team. <laughs>